Bye bye, little jump leads. Yeah, that's going to be perfect. So what I need to do, we need to work out how much we want. It's got to run all the way around. It's got to go from coil 7, 8 and 9 here to them, to them, to them and come out here. So that should be long enough. So I'll snip that there. So how the plan's gonna work, coils seven, 16, 25, and 34, are all going to be connected to this first ring as we call it so that's the first job now obviously to do that this wire will need to be cut in certain places so that the wire from the uh, coils can be wrapped over it and soldered to it that's the job so where are we starting there so I'm just going to spend a minute or two getting these wires as straight as I can one thing you'll notice is these little slots I cut in to bend the wires through. I want to get those slots as deep as I can because then it means the wire can get further through. I'm holding the wires down with a pen so I don't cut through them basically. Do be careful not to hack into the coils. Again we're doing that to get them nice and far over on the inside where they will be connected. Focus now needs to be on. Let's say again. Whoops. On connecting these. Look, seven, sixteen, twenty-five, and thirty-four. So let's get sixteen. Jubbly, 16, 25, and 34. Come in, number 34, your time is up. So now, let's go back to the start, seven. So, yep, that's seven. So that will have to be connected to the start of this. So let me just trim a bit off. So that's how I've done that. Then I think what we'll try is we'll measure round to where it needs to connect next. And that 
will be just there. So what we want to do is we want to cut out a little slice there. Don't need to make it too big, just enough to solder. So that's how that looks. I'm going to refer back to the diagram again. What we've done is we've connected 7, 16, 25, and 34, which makes the first phase. So there's four places it's connecting one, two, three, four. Now, when we do the second one, it will be a little bit staggered like that. We obviously have to make sure nothing's touching. Well, nothing touching that we don't want to be touching, okay? Now this may get a little bit more difficult because of the thickness of this uh, cable and the amount of wire I've got left to bring over, but we shall see. There's two done, obviously they're not soldered yet, but that will be the next step after fitting number three. I'd actually tried fitting number three when number two should have been, that's why I had to stop and start again. Well, as it's stacked in there for sure. You can see what I mean about them being staggered here. And these are the three outs. So, what I'm actually going to do. One thing I haven't mentioned is how careful you've got to be with these things because I've been fairly careful with it and scratched a lot of the coils. I don't think there's any shorts there, but we will soon find out. I'll put some uh, swaggy labels on. So what I'm going to do now is we'll put it on the magnet rotor, bolt it in, and we'll see what it's saying. As a simple test, 
we can take turns at joining the phases while we turn it and we would expect to encounter a lot of resistance when we turn it when two of these phases or more are connected and uh, if that happens that's a very good sign so the device is in place if you can see in the middle I've put a uh, more substantial bolt there a little grub screw is starting to play silly you know what so we don't need that getting stuck on there at the critical stage so if you can hear the hum it's got a tiny bit of a wobble on the rotor but it is only tiny uh, and that can be addressed uh, because there's going to be bolts in the middle I haven't yet ordered the chain uh, but I will have to do that the gear sorry but I will have to do that very soon uh, now one thing we can do, I don't know if you saw my video about electric bikes, we can, if we join two of the phases together, yeah, by just holding the phase two and phase three, for example, then it becomes hard to turn. It's actually making the uh, vice wobble a bit, and therefore you can see it on the camera. So that's a good sign. So let's just connect one and three. Same again, getting that rumble. Two and three. And then one and two I think that's all of them so that's a good sign that's a very good sign it means it's creating power and sort of sending it back in on itself which is exactly what it should do in this instance right next thing I'm going to do I'm going to join all three together and as with the electric bike motor this should become very hard to turn but should be fairly smooth and that's what it is very hard to turn but very smooth if that makes sense so excellent the last bit to do and i probably won't do it in this video is just to solder the connections all these bits here and the joins together but i did want to get it set up and tested first just to check it made some power and it does make some power let me see if we can this Right, what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn it and I'm going to hold this Stanley blade here and we'll try and get it to make some sparks. So there, just turn, turn it by hand. We can see those sparks. So yeah, I'm calling a success on that. And that doesn't, obviously the project isn't finished yet, but it's coming on and that's a major plus that that works and just a reminder i did use instead of paying sort of like 10 pounds for five meters <clears throat> excuse me of really thin wire i just bought these uh, jump leads and butchered one of them so yeah see you soon so it wouldn't really be right not to hook it up to the rectifier and the multimeter it's the only thing i can really do at the moment until it's up on the tower with a set of blades on it not really going to know how much electricity it's going to make but the point of me showing you this is that you'll see it's making a lot less voltage than it was before okay whereas before i could get it i think it was kicking out 58 then obviously i expect and hope this voltage is going to be a lot lower oh got up to 18. happy with that over 20. And that is the device how it is looking currently at the moment the other stator is on my workshop bench so interestingly sorry one more thing before I go interestingly it creates the correct polarity current I'm gonna call it sorry there's probably a name for that whatever way I turn it so it doesn't matter what way it's turning it's producing the power as it should be both ways Epic! Peace out in a bizzle.